The average person blinks 11,000 times per day, and an average blink takes only 300 milliseconds to complete. But the blink of an eye is all the time it can take for your life to change forever. In the case of a gunshot wound, a bullet is a carrier of force, transferring destructive energy through the body. A bullet ripping through tissue can cut a cavity 30 times wider than the path it takes, causing secondary damage to the surrounding area. If a bone is hit, the fragments can turn into lethal projectiles. A bullet that exits the body doesn't have a chance to unleash as much energy, and therefore it usually does less damage depending on where you're hit. In the case of a knife wound, if you're slashed, the length of the wound is greater than the depth. Unless a blood vessel has been cut, this type of wound won't be as serious as when you're stabbed. Here, the cut depth is greater than the length, which means major internal damage if you've hit a vital organ or an artery. For either kind of wound, getting to an emergency room will improve your chance of survival. But don't drive yourself. Call an ambulance. But it's what you do in the moments beforehand that can save your life. So follow these easy steps to survive. Don't move. Sit or lie down, whichever is more comfortable, and remain still. Moving will make your injuries worse. Never try to remove a bullet yourself, and if you've been stabbed, don't remove the knife. If it sliced a major artery, the knife may be preventing you from bleeding out. If you're not the injured party, lightly support the victim's head, keeping it aligned with the rest of the body, and make sure they don't move. Next, concentrate on life-giving oxygen. Breathe. Regardless of your wound, slow your breathing and remain calm. Hyperventilating will only complicate your injuries. If you're not the injured party and the victim isn't breathing at all, pinch their nose, cover their mouth with yours, and blow. Two seconds for each breath. If you hear sucking sounds or see frothy blood coming from the chest cavity, immediately cover the wound with whatever is handy. Leave one side open as a flutter valve so air can escape while the lung is reinflating. Once oxygen is flowing, it's time to control bleeding. Apply steady direct pressure to the wound no less than 10 minutes or until help arrives. If the wound is to a limb, elevate above the level of the heart. Now, prepare the wound for transport. For a bullet wound, pull the sides of the wound together and secure with tape. For a protruding knife, stabilize with heavy dressing of gauze or cloth. If you're not the injured party and the victim is bleeding heavily from the chest, abdomen, or pelvis, compress one of the major arteries supplying blood to the area such as the brachial or the femoral. Despite rumors to the contrary, use a tourniquet only as a last resort. Muscles and nerves die if deprived of blood too long. You risk an amputation if help is too far away. And now it's time to get to a hospital. Then you can show off your scar and laugh in the face of danger because you've just survived. Remember, always seek medical attention for bullet or knife wounds and follow these easy steps to stay intact.